DNA analysts, in my last video, we went through how to make a gel. If you have not watched that video, there's a link down below. Make sure to watch that first. Now we're going to be on the back of the handout, the handout's down below as well. And today I'm going to show you how to load and run your gel, how to add your DNA and run it, and then how to view your gel and analyze it. We made buffer yesterday and we're going to make buffer again today, but we're going to make more today because this is our running buffer. So this is the buffer that will fill our chamber. I am using the Edvotec M12, which will hold 400 milliliters of buffer. So you may remember the first time what we did to dilute is we divided by 50 and that'll tell us uh, how many times 50 goes into 400 tells us how many milliliters of the concentrate we need. So 400 divided by 50 is easy to do in our heads, hopefully. That tells us we need eight milliliters of the concentrated. We start with our concentrate and then we add water to make up the difference. So use your 50X TAE concentrate. You could use a graduated pipette to get to eight, or you can do this. And if you're not quite there, you can just use a pipette to adjust it to get to eight. Then you're going to dump that into, dump that into your large beaker. Once our buffer's in our large beaker, go ahead and add the distilled water until we reach the 400 line. The second step is add your buffer. So you're just gonna dump it right into your apparatus. Now some teachers do this differently, but I like to add the buffer first. So my note was just pour it into the chamber. So I have the gel, I'm gonna keep it very flat. <clears throat> I'm gonna turn it so that it matches the orientation of my gel tray. It's important that the wells go back where they were previously. And then keeping it as flat as possible, you just wanna slide it out of the bag and back into the gel tray. Remember to make sure you have gloves on when you do this. So your note put back in just as it was. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna load the DNA. For the DNA loading, you are going to need your gel, your tips, your DNA strip, and a container for your used tips because you have to change tips every time you load and you're going to want your 200p micropipette set to 30. My DNA comes in this little strip so if you have an Edvotech kit of, of some kind this is usually how it comes and you can see it's colored from the gel loading dye which has already been added. This DNA has already undergone PCR and it's been cut with restriction enzymes and it's all ready to go. You'll notice that the wells on the top say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H are empty. So we're going to load from left to right in our wells A through F. I'm showing you a method called dry loading where you load your gel when it's not down in the buffer. A lot of people do wet loading, but I think this way is much easier, especially for beginners. So go ahead and just stab right through the foil. You want to make sure your pipette's set to 30. Press your thumb to the first stop before you put it down into the liquid to avoid bubbles. Then release your thumb and you should have 30 microliters of dye, dyed DNA and no air bubbles. I like to hold the tip at a little bit of an angle. Make sure it's down in the well but it's angled and that just keeps me <clears throat> from piercing a hole in the well. As you add the DNA, press all the way to the second stop and then pull the tip out before you let go, otherwise you'll suck some back up and then change your tips and repeat with each sample. Okay, once you are done, oh, that was real dumb. I just pushed that. You should be able to see DNA in each of your wells. <clears throat> I 
So here's a view from the side. I think I might have messed up my DNA when I kind of pressed on that. I pushed it up out of the wells. So I'm going to go ahead and load a second set of wells. It's good if you have extra DNA to go ahead and load a second set of wells anyway, so you get more practice and you get a second chance at seeing it. For these next notes, I'm going to show them to you and then just discuss the notes and then show you. So you load your DNA from left to right, your samples. Mine were A to F, so left to right. And then you don't want to move your chamber after adding the gel, putting it down in the chamber. So we're going to move toward the power source and we're going to gently lower the gel into the buffer. We don't want to disturb the DNA. Your power source is what will provide electricity so that the DNA can move. So I'm using Edvotex Quadrasource. You can connect four electrophoresis chambers to this one power source. And you can see I've set my chamber right next to it, but you want to be close enough that you don't have to move this chamber once you put your DNA down in. Now I'm going to take my tray that already has my DNA loaded into it, and I'm gently going to lower it in. But be careful when you do this. The black is the negative electrode, so I actually need to flip it this direction so that my DNA is in the negative side. Okay, so I'm trying to lower it in very gently because the point is to not disturb the DNA as it goes in. Now you can see the wells and you can see the DNA down in them. The next step is to put the lid on. We want to attach black to black and red to red. Try not to move your chamber so you don't disturb your DNA. And it'll click down into place. Then we're going to connect to the power source. Again, we're going to do black to black and red to red. We could use any of these four areas to plug in. Once all teams are connected to the power source, then you can go ahead and turn it on. There's a switch in the back that you flip to turn it on. And then you're going to set the voltage. By default, my voltage is set to 125, and that's what I want the voltage to be, so I'm going to leave it there. You could turn the voltage up to make it go faster, or you could turn it down to have it go slower. But we are going to run it at 125. I'm going to go ahead and set a timer for it. So I pushed the side arrow, and then I'm going to set a timer for 35 minutes. If you're not using this power source, you might not have a timer, um, but you can just keep an eye on the clock. And then we're going to press the start. Once it starts, you want to double check that your voltage is right, because I have had power sources fail in the past, where even though I set it to 125, it was only running at 15 volts, for example. This one looks like it's running at a good voltage. And then one of my favorite parts is actually looking for bubbles to confirm that it's running. You should never walk away until you have done this. So you see all those tiny bubbles coming off the electrode on the red side? And then over here, where the black electrode is, these are our negative bubbles. So now the negative electrode is repelling the DNA. Because the DNA is repulsed, it's going to start to move away from the negative and toward the positive. One more thing that I always have my students do is lay their bag on top of their power source. Because my students are always gone by the time this stops running, and then the teacher has to put the gel into the bag, and I want to get the right gel back to the right team. Lay your bag on top of your apparatus. So let's make sure we understand the purpose of each step. The baggie on top of the lid is to make sure that you get the, your correct gel back at the end of this. The power source is to run the electricity. We are setting ours for 125 volts for 35 to 45 minutes. We'll check it after 35 and see if it's gone far enough. The bubbles tell you that the electricity is running. And finally, the tracking die. When you look in this chamber, what you're seeing is the tracking die, not the actual DNA itself. And that's showing you approximately how far the DNA has migrated. At this point, I'm four minutes in, and I can see that the DNA has already jumped the wells. It's not on the black line anymore, it's moved a bit. So you watch that, and after 35 to 45 minutes, it should have traveled about three and a half centimeters or so. You don't want to stop it until it's gone three and a half to six centimeters, and that's how we know the bands have separated. So you can see I wrote in my table three and a half to six centimeters. Okay, I'm just going to show you a neat little trick. If you want to see your DNA before you pull it from the gel and see if it's ready and where the bands are, 
you can actually set your apparatus up on top <laughs> of your uh, blue light transilluminator and you can see the bands. It's kind of fun. Okay, here we are. It's our moment of truth. I am turning off the power source. It has been 45 minutes at this time. And you can see the tracking die has made it a good, a good uh, distance. So you turn off the power source and unplug the lid and then go ahead and remove the lid. Usually, as the teacher, I'm the one who has to do this for all the students. If you get a chance to do this yourself, it's pretty cool. Okay, so now I am lifting the gel tray out and I'm gonna transfer the gel back into the baggie. And let's go ahead and do cleanup. Cleanup's really simple. Just rinse off the tray, rinse the apparatus well, and set them both upside down to dry. I'm going to dry off my baggie as best I can because I don't want to get my transilluminator too wet. And this is my first personal favorite part. We are going to use the True Blue 2 Transilluminator from Edvotech, and this will let us visualize the DNA. Okay, you want to lift this up. If we had stained it with a blue stain, we would do it on the white light, but when we use CyberSafe, you want to put the blue plastic down, then lay your gel down, and then put the orange on top of it. Now you do want to turn the lights down for this part. So the first time I did this, I flipped the switch, I got all excited, and then I turned it off and went to tell my family, and when I turned it back on, it looked like this. That's because the True Blue has two settings. When you're using it with CyberSafe and the Transilluminator, you want it to be pushed up to the black, not to the white. And both sets of lanes turned out pretty well. Okay, let's recap here what we did. My paper got a little wet, but we turn off the power, and that's just to cut the electricity. We don't want electricity running through it when we're handling our apparatus. Transfer the gel to a baggie, and I'm going to put for viewing because we want it to be in a baggie when we set it on the blue light transilluminator. Clean the chamber and tray, so we rinse with water and invert to let it dry. Don't need to dry it off. Turn on Transilluminator. Remember to darken the room first. And choose the right setting to make sure that you're able to view the CyberSafe. So if your Transilluminator has multiple settings like mine, make sure that you have selected the right setting. Otherwise, you might think you have no DNA. Place the gel on the Transilluminator. It goes between the blue and the orange plate. Take a photo. So you definitely want to um, take a photo with your camera so you can analyze it later. Um, our classroom only has one transilluminator and there's lots of gels. So you take a picture and then you just analyze the picture instead of the gel itself and you make room for the next team. So I'll say to analyze and compare lanes. Like I said, we could compare to the standard. Generally, we are looking for our flip matches. So if you have the same number of R flips and they're in the same place, then uh, the DNA could be a match. I hope this video helped you out and that you have great success on your DNA gel electrophoresis. If you have any questions at all, please drop them in the comments. And if this video helped you, I would love to know. So let me know. Have a great day.